Let's go through and draw some more wave functions qualitatively for this potential. So now notice that we again have two regions and that the edges are the infinite well. The edges won't always be the infinite well, but that's kind of helpful to initially um, to think about this. So in this region, we actually have a linearly varying potential. We'll have to think about that carefully. And then there's a jump and it goes up to this. So this entire region, we have in fact a non-finite, sorry, a non-infinite, also known as finite, um, potential. So let's again draw a few wave functions. So let's start by saying that here is our phi 1 equals 0 line. So what do we know has to happen? At this left edge, it needs to be 0 because our potential goes to infinity there. And then at this point, now our energy, right, because this is kind of like also saying this is E1 mapped onto this potential, at that point it needs to switch to decaying. This is not exactly exponentially decaying because you don't have a uniform potential here. But think about it, you can say decaying, right? It has to be getting smaller as you get farther away. But it's in fact not exactly going to be exponential. So solving this differential equation will actually give you a slightly different functional form, but it's still reasonable to say this is similar to sinusoidal and then this is similar to exponential decaying. That's not exactly true. So, it, well, it's not exactly sinusoidal and exponential, but it's true that it's similar. So what we need to do here, we again say, okay, how many nodes, how many antinodes? It's our first state, so we don't have any nodes. We have one big bump. So it starts here. We would think about this kind of like a sinusoidal, but then, and wh where you put the peak, don't worry about that too much, right? We don't know exactly where that is. Then it gets to this point, and it needs to decay. Now, one mistake, again, this should be continuous. If you do a bad job drawing it, again, draw an arrow, label it, say, hey, this is continuous in the function and its first derivative. So one mistake that I see students make is that they actually wait until the wave function has crossed the potential, and then they say, oh, now it's exponential. That's not true. It's going to switch from sinusoidal to exponential where the energy line crosses the potential. Okay, so now let's say that our second uh, state, and oftentimes, uh, like if I give you a problem or the book problem, it will draw this line for you so you kind of know where you're supposed to be imagining this. So let's say that that's our second energy state. So what's happening here? Again, in this region, it's vaguely sinusoidal, and then in this region, it's going to be decaying in a vaguely exponential way. Not immediately going to zero, because it's not infinite here, but it starts here. How many nodes and antinodes do we have? We have one node, and we have two antinodes. So two peaks. Now the next thing to think about, now that it's going to be a slightly more complicated wave function, is our wavelength and amplitude con um, constant here? Again, it's a little bit weird to talk about wavelength and amplitude because it's not exactly a sine function. It's not going to be. We expect that our amplitude is increasing as this distance gets smaller and that that wavelength gets longer. So when we place down our two antinodes, they, um, or our one node, it's not going to be symmetric. So we need a bigger wavelength here, bigger wavelength, and a higher amplitude. So I might actually put my node here. Notice I really do like drawing out where that node's gonna be. So it goes up, it comes down, and now here I'm, I'm trying to really create that longer wavelength, that greater amplitude, and it's gonna start curling around, and then when it gets here, exponential decay. To zero again in a continuous way so it's kind of a goofy looking shape and you might draw it slightly different but the key is this has a bigger amplitude this has a longer wavelength than that portion and that once we cross this point it needs to be uh, kind of decaying in a pseudo exponential way okay let's pick up here and let's say that this is uh, phi 4 equals zero Okay, so what does that mean? We need to have three nodes 
we need to have four antinodes. And I need to have a marker that you can see more clearly. Okay, so now we again think about two regions. In this region, my potential is constant, which means that my wavelength is constant and my amplitude is constant. In this region, it's just like this, that as we move to the left, we in fact will have a longer wavelength and greater amplitude. Now there is a jump here, which means that my wavelength will be even longer over here and my amplitude will be even higher, right? So, it sta so the probability of finding your particle in this part of the well is much higher than the probability of finding your particle here. So if we need three nodes, I'm going to put maybe one here and maybe one, let's see, I'm trying to make this be, oh, and also we know it's going to be zero here and zero here because both of these goes to infinity. So if I do here, then here, oh, that won't work, that's going the wrong way. Um, again, it sometimes takes a few tries to get this right. So I don't want to do that because I need to have my wavelength be shorter over here. So my first node might be there and then my second node can be here. Uh, I still think that's bad. Pencil will be your friend for these types of problems. Okay, so one node two nodes, three nodes. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. So again, it starts at zero. We have a small amplitude that's getting bigger. My wavelength is getting bigger. And now my, wav my wavelength is even longer. My amplitude is even longer. But we would say that here my amplitude hasn't changed. So if I call this A1, this is also A1. So <coughs> drawing this qualitatively, you really need to think about how many nodes and antinodes there are. That corresponds to your n value. Then ask yourself, what is happening with my potential? If your potential goes to infinity, you know that your wave function has to equal zero at that point. Otherwise, make sure that your wave function is continuous, both the function itself and its first derivative at every other, other point, and Think about how your wavelength and amplitude are changing as your, your potential goes up and down. So the book does go through some examples. Remember, feel free to label things if you've done a bad job drawing it, but do make some attempt to draw it. And especially the nodes and antinodes, get that right. You can count. So if you drew four nodes and labeled it three nodes, I would be like, maybe you don't know what a node is. So please, do your best. I don't expect your best to be better than mine, and you've seen me in real time do the best I can. So try to do roughly this well and, and label. So this qualitative approach is really nice because we can start to understand a lot about this. And as we move into future problems, as we think about the infinite, um, as we think about the harmonic oscillator, this will be really helpful.